Has anybody ever told you that the Bible says that marriage is supposed to be between one man and one woman? Well, no, we need to stop confusing the culture of the Bible with the message of the Bible. Also, that's not how it went then either. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a deep skeptic, also a pastor. Okay, so marriage is something that's defined by a culture. And if you go in the Bible and you look for <laughs> marriage, you're gonna find something very different than one man and one woman and 2.5 children. Yeah, biblical marriage was uh, where the woman's family basically sold the woman to the man to be his wife. And then he did with that woman as he chose. And most families or many families were not just one man and one woman. It was one man and many women uh, because men could have multiple women in their lives but women could only have the one male partner and the woman was the property of the man he got to do with her as he saw fit she needed to have kids she needed to have and then like if she did not do what the man thought that she should do then he had the right to have all kinds of control over her life in all kinds of really horrifying ways and though the uh, multiple partners was not something that was thought of great for the entirety of the Bible. For a whole lot of the Bible, it was. It was sort of just the way things were at that time and in that part of the world because, and this is the important part, that was the culture of that part of the world at that time. And all of these things that are culturally defined are the things that we have to be careful to not baptize as the message of the Bible. And if you say, well, well, then how do you even know if the Bible is trustworthy or reliable? Well, that's really easy. Uh, we don't treat it like an instruction book because it's not that. It's an ancient spiritual text that's supposed to sort of reveal to us, uncover the nature of the divine in our lives and in this world. I'm also not saying that you need to just ignore those parts of the Bible because I think that all of those parts, even the ones that deal with marriage and faithfulness and all of that kind of stuff can help us understand what we need to do and understand how we can connect with God in this life. It's just different because the first thing you have to do is to take the biblical culture out of it and so sort of abstract the cultural elements from it and find out okay, so what is this saying at a deeper level like what is the deeper truth that exists below the surface of the culturally defined norms and then when you find that out you apply that that bigger deeper truth to your culture right now wherever that is you might be in the united states in the northeast or in the southwest or in europe or in asia or somewhere on the world and your culture is not something that is necessarily good or bad it just is and you take the deeper truth the truths of this ancient spiritual text and you apply them to your culture right now and see what they tell you about how you should live and how you should connect with God and be the person that God has created you to be. Now, I know I'm going to, going to get a lot of pushback on this issue right here, especially from Christians, but not only Christians. But then I'm going to bring it back to show how he was also incorrect about the cultural, bringing that into your own cultural norm today and how it's still good wisdom, because then you have to omit a bunch of things in order for that to actually uh, apply. Now, first, the subject matter to which he spoke on. As many of you know, uh, I have no problems with polygamy. I think that if a person want to have 50, 11 wives, then they should be able to have 50, 11 wives. And it is not comparable to what they do in another country, but how it would be done here in America. You can't say that, oh, but in Saudi Arabia, a man has another wife if he can afford another wife and the man provides and the woman don't work and all these sorts of things. That wouldn't work in America. It's not going to work in America. Our American culture would not allow that. It's difficult enough that our American culture to even have polygamy. But it's not going to work. You can't, you have to, I do take what he says in that you have to make it for, fit your culture of today. Now, the other aspect that many people are going to bring up is that in the beginning, there was just Adam and Eve. Well, no, that is only if you think that Genesis 2 is just giving a more detailed version of Genesis 1. But in Genesis 1, it says they created man, man, male and female at the same time and told them to have uh, dominion over the earth and replenish the earth. So there is no, there's two different creations when you look at it because it's actually written by two different authors from two different tribes at two different time frames trying to tell a similar story but not the exact same story so these are two different creation stories now if you did take the adam and eve story then you have to say that adam and eve of course adam didn't have another wife that to be able to have polygamy because there were no other wives for him to be able to take if you are a believer in just the adam and eve story it is not until you get to one of the descendants of cain that men begin to have more than one wife but then even as you go through it, the lineage of Seth, 
uh, after Noah, men began to have more than one wife after Noah, because all of Cain's uh, relatives are gone now. But even after that, Abraham had his slave wife, Hagar, and had his wife, Sarah. He had more than one wife. Um, Jacob had both Leah and Rachel. And then he also had two slave wives, the handmaidens of both of those wives. And from those wives, you get your 12 tribes of Israel that is supposed to be the children of this God, venerated by this God. So although there are those who didn't have more than one wife, others had. Remember, when Saul lost his kingdom to David, God also gave David all the wives of Saul. So God blessed David with those wives. David did not go out of favor for a moment with God because he had multiple wives, as some would try to point out. David lost favor because David committed adultery by having sex with another man's wife, I think Uriah's wife, and then tried to set Uriah up to make him seem like that was his child. And then after David committed the crime of murder of Uriah, falling further out of the grace of this God, in your God's just and merciful way of doing things, he killed the baby and punished the baby instead of punishing David. Now, Bathsheba never had a choice in any of this situation. She was forced into all of this. So David basically raped her by kingship and then forced her to become another one of his wives. And as I talk about how this Bible does not like women, there is also the aspect of the fact that women, the people like to point out, well, Esther was a great woman in the Bible, but Esther was one of many of the wives of Xerxes. She wasn't even the primary wife. She was a secondary wife. She rose to prominence, but she was a secondary wife, which indicates that they are in favor of multiple wives. Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. He didn't fall out of favor because he had all those wives. He fell out of favor because he began to worship the gods of those wives. So it's always something else. It's never the fact that the man has more than one wife that this guy falls out of favor with a man. It is how this man is acting, what he is doing, that falls out of favor. And just to further show how this guy... Um, mistreats women in these types of situations. In Corinthians, the writings of Paul says that wives submit, your, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. Just as Jesus was the head of the church, so is the husband the head of the wife. Now, I want to ask you this question, ladies, if you are a believer in this. Are you supposed to disobey Jesus? If your answer is no, and if you're supposed to submit to your husbands as when asked unto the Lord, why do you disobey your husband? Shouldn't you always obey your husband? And according to your Jesus teachings, what God has put together, when, when he's talking about marriage, what God has put together, let no man tear asunder. So, except in the case of divorce, you are not supposed to be able to leave your husband. So he can beat you. He can mistreat you. But you're not supposed to. Now, he's not supposed to do all those things. He's supposed to love you, be willing to die for you. But if he does mistreat you, you're not supposed to leave your husband. You're supposed to stay and be with your husband. And this is one of the reasons why many women, many women in the past stayed into the, in these abusive relationships because of believing in this type of religious belief. That is truly just a cultural thing of patriarchy that men has used to control women from the beginning of modern history. So really think about those things and always remember that you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibration.